When there's an ocean of doubt in front of me And my back's up against the wall I know it's an opportunity For my God to show his heart And it may look impossible in the natural But I know that it's not Cause I know that my God will come To those who may feel lost in the moment 
they come around All of his blessings they come on down on me June 28th, that's when you should be here. And tell all your friends, we're going to have a great party in, in, in Wellspring Kids that weekend, okay? All right, we'll see you then. Thanks, bye. Oh, wow. Someone left a gift for me. Maybe, says Pastor Johnny. Oh, hey, how are you? I was getting ready to film and I came in and look what someone left on my table. Let me see what it is. I don't know, but I like gifts. Here's a cool new journal. Wow. And a new bracelet. It's leather with a cross on it. Oh, and some Skittles. And some cool sunglasses. Those might be a little small. Maybe I'll exchange those. And a brand new pen. Uh, those hurt my head just a little bit. <laughs> but it's still so much fun. Do you like gifts? I don't know about you, but I love gifts. And when we get a gift, we should use it because what if we don't use it? What if I just put all this stuff right back in the bag and never used it? That wouldn't be good, would it? Not at all. That reminds me of God's word because the Bible is God's gift to us. And if we don't use it, we don't get any good out of it. But if we open it up and read it, and we think about it, we meditate on it, we pray over it, we ask the Holy Spirit to to teach us and to show us what we need to know, wow, it renews our heart, it renews our mind, and it helps us to grow in our faith. Well, that's a cool thought. And that reminds me of our Go Answer today. Because our Go Answer is, the Bible lights our path. Say that with me. The Bible lights our path. One more time. The Bible lights our path. But if we're going to have it light our path, we have to use it, right? Because like my cell phone has a flashlight on it, but I have the hardest time making it work. I have to remember, no, that's not right. Where did it go? Maybe I press this button and tap that. There it is. And it came on. Now, if I don't turn it on, it doesn't help me. So I have to know how to turn it on. Then I have to use it. And then it does what it's supposed to do. Now, if I can remember how to turn it off. One time I turned my flashlight on by accident. It was on for two weeks because I couldn't find the off button. That's not so good. So the Bible, God's word is a gift and the Bible lights our path. How does that help me? Well, let's practice being a pilot and we can see how it's going to help us be more like Jesus and help others take a step closer to him. Prepared, involved, Loving, open to God, team player. So very good. I saw a lot of pilots out in front of me. And I think today's lesson 
is going to focus on P, being prepared. Are you prepared to serve God at whatever capacity he's called you to? Hmm, that's a big question. So what has God called us to do? Well, sometimes God gives us a specific purpose. And as you get older and grow in your faith, you'll come closer to that specific purpose. But right now, one thing we're called to do is obedience. We're supposed to obey. And if you remember, Samson forgot to obey God. And Samson started living for himself. And that got him in a pack of trouble. So let's think about how we can be prepared and obey God and use his word to light our path so it shows us where to go and tells us what to do. And we can be more like God wants us to be. So let's look at our verse. And our verse is a good one. I need my glasses. Because we're going to think about this verse today and how it might be able to help us. So, so let's practice our verse. Do you have the gift of speaking? Then speak as though God himself were speaking through you. That's a big thought, and we're going to talk about that today. Do you have the gift of helping others? Do it with all the strength and energy that God supplies. Then everything you do will bring glory to God through Jesus Christ. 1 Peter 4.11. Now that's a tricky verse, and it has a lot for us to think about. So today we're going to look at just the first part, because it's obvious. I need more practice. And if I need more practice, I bet some of you do too. But I know some of you probably know it already. So do you have the gift of speaking? Then speak as though God himself were speaking through you. Wow. How am I supposed to speak as if God himself is speaking through me? That's a hard thought. That's a hard question. Hmm. Our Go Answer says... The Bible lights our path. So if we're trying to understand God's word, maybe we should read God's word. That reminds me of a verse in Philippians. Philippians 4.8. If you have your Bibles, you can look there or just watch on the screen or listen as I read. Philippians 4.8. And now, dear brothers and sisters, one final thing. Fix your thoughts on what is true and honorable and right and pure, and lovely, and admirable. Wow, that's a lot of different thoughts. Think about these things that are excellent and worthy of praise. Whew. The Apostle Paul was trying to tell us how to think and how to speak and how to guard our words to make sure we're speaking and acting and thinking like God wants us to. So, let's think about this. Oh, in my gift, I got a new journal. I also got a new pen, and I can use both of those. So, if we start with Philippians 4.8. Philippians 4, verse 8. Oops, I closed it. You know what? This reminds me of a story. And I think sometimes stories will help us because we can make an application. Because remember, we do our soap, we read the scripture, we make an observation, then we make an application, then we pray over it. So when my two older boys were smaller, they were playing in their room one day and I came by the hallway and I heard my oldest son tell my second son to repeat after him. He said, Blake, repeat after me. And Blake looked at him and nodded. And JD said, push. And Blake said, push. And JD said, me. And Blake said, me. And JD said, off. And Blake said, off. And JD said, the bed. And Blake said, the bed. And whoosh. JD pushed him right off the bed and he fell and he bonked his head and he was fussing and crying. I walked in the room and I said, what happened? Now, did I have to ask what happened? Because I heard and saw what happened, but JD didn't see and know that I had seen and heard what happened. So he was in a fix. And he said, Blake told me to push him off the bed. Now, wait a second. Did Blake say to push him off the bed? JD said, repeat after me. Did Blake repeat after him? 
Yes, he did. So was J.D. telling the truth? Yes. But was it the whole truth? Hmm. Let's look at Philippians 4.8 and see what God says to the Apostle Paul. And we'll see if J.D. was telling the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So Paul says, now, dear brothers and sisters, one final thing. So he's been teaching the Christians at Philippi, and he says, fix your thoughts on what is true. So think about what is true. So if it's not true, we shouldn't think about it. So J.D. was telling the truth, but there's more to it. Because Paul says what is honorable and right. Was J.D. honoring Blake? When he said, repeat after me, so I can have permission to push you off the bed? No. Was it right for J.D. to do that? No. So although what he said was true, it wasn't honorable or right, was it? Mm -mm. Then he goes on to say, in what is pure. So if we're thinking about what is pure, that refers to our motives. Why we do what we do. So was JD's motive pure? Was he doing something to help Blake? To make Blake better? To move him closer to Jesus? No. He was acting like Samson when Samson used God's strength and God's power for his own purposes. And JD used his words to trick Blake into asking permission to push him off the bed. And so JD pushed him off the bed and thought he was justified in doing it. Wow. Was that a pure motive? I don't think so. So JD got the first check, but now we got three minuses. And then what is lovely? Now that sounds kind of silly. What is lovely? Is a thought lovely? Is a thought beautiful? So let's think about that for a minute. When we see a picture of a beautiful sunset, or we see a picture of a beautiful mountain range, or a beautiful blue sky, that's lovely, and that reminds us of who God is. Because God gave us a great, beautiful creation. I've been whitewater rafting, and it's amazing, but I love the beach. This last week, I went to the beach, I just love to stand on the, on the sand and look out over the water. And I've said this before, but it reminds me just how big God is and how small I am, and that if God's that big, for sure he can take care of me. So when I think of if a thought is lovely, I think, does that thought remind people of God? Was JD trying to push Blake off the bed? Was that reminding people of God? Uh-uh, because it wasn't kind. And God's word says, be ye kind one to another. And that wasn't kind at all. And then it says, admirable. Was it an admirable thing to do? Should he get an award or prize for that? When you do something good, you get an award. Like some of you just got awards for school, for perfect attendance, for good grades, for having good citizenship or good character or being good athletes because you worked hard to do something and you did your best. And that's admirable. Can you say admirable? Yeah. Was JD asking his brother to push him off the bed? Admirable? Not, uh. So it was true, yes. But was it honorable? No. Was it right? No. Was it pure? No. Was it lovely? No. Was it admirable? No. Five problems. But let's think about this. If Samson had thought about this, it might have changed his actions. He might have made choices that were more obedient and more God-honoring, and pointed people to the almighty, all-powerful God instead of his strength and his power and his success. Because remember, he forgot. He forgot to remember that his strength was found in God. Whew, you say, Pastor Johnny, these are a lot of things to think about. Well, there's still more. And Paul goes on to say, think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. Wow. So it's not just true, honorable, right, pure, lovely, and admirable, but things that are excellent and worthy of praise. Whew. So are we doing our best when we say something? 
Are we doing something that is worthy of praise when we say something? Because you know what? Our words can encourage or our words can hurt. When I was in uh, fourth grade, I was a big kid. I was a really big kid. And I was in the playground and I was climbing up on a net and I fell down. I missed my step and I fell off the climbing net. And people laughed at me and made fun of me uh, because I was big. And they were making fun of my size. And it, it made me sad. And so I, I went to my classroom and I, I went and sat at my desk. And my teacher said, what are you doing? I said, well, I, I just want to sit down at my desk. And she said, well, you need to go outside and play. It's not class time yet. And I said, but if it would be okay, I would, I would like to sit at my desk. And she said, no, you need to go outside. And I said, well, I don't want to go back out there because they were making fun of me. And she said, well, sticks and stones may break your bones, but words will never hurt you. And I said to her, then why does it hurt so much? And we both had to stop and think for a minute. Because no, they hadn't, didn't throw a rock at me. They didn't throw a stick at me. They hadn't hurt me physically, but they made fun of me and it hurt my heart. Remember we talked about the armor of God? The battle's not with swords and shields. The battle's in our heart. And sometimes Satan wants to wound our heart to make us feel bad about ourselves or to make us feel bad or angry about somebody else. And that's wrong. Wow. You say, Pastor Johnny, I never thought that if I have the gift of speaking and then speak like God was speaking through me would be so complicated. Well, really, it's not. Because you know what? Our Go Answer says the Bible lights our path. So let's go back to being a pilot and being prepared. If we're reading God's word every day and thinking about God's word, Joshua tells us in Joshua 1.8 that this book of the law, the Bible, shall not depart out of my mouth, but you should meditate in it day and night so that you can observe, think about, and apply doing to all that it says. Wow, that's a huge thought. But then you'll make your way prosperous and then you'll have good success. Wow. <clears throat> Let me ask you this. Did Samson have good success in his life? Not really. He ended up in prison as a slave, as a servant. Did J.D. have success with Blake? No, because he got in trouble. There was a big consequence for that because he was thinking about himself and what he wanted, and it wasn't right. So if we think about God's word and we apply it to our heart, it changes our thinking. When we change our thinking, it changes our actions, and we act more like Jesus. And so when people see us, they see a difference and say, I want to know what's different about you. Why do you act that way? And you can say, because I love Jesus and he loves me and I want to be more like him. And you can too. So the more you know about God's word, the more you begin to think about what God wants us to think about and the more you begin to do what God wants us to do and the more people notice and the more people you can share the gospel with and you can help them take a step from where they are to a step closer to Jesus and we make God's family so big and it's so great and it's so exciting. Don't you want to be a part of God's family? I know I do and I hope you are. We'll see you next week right here at Wellspring Kids.